Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namaste. So in an early video, we went over the mantra seven from the Mandukya Upanishad. Let's just review it quickly. Turiya is not that which is conscious of the internal subjective world, nor that which is conscious of the external objective world, nor that which is conscious of both nor that which is a mass of all sentiency, nor that which is simple consciousness, nor that which is insentient. It is unseen by any sense organ, not related to anything, incomprehensible by the mind, uninferrable, unthinkable, indescribable, essentially of the nature of consciousness constituting the self alone, negation of all phenomena, the peaceful, all bliss and the non-dual. This is what is known as the fourth, Turiya. This is the Atman, and it has to be realized. So here, Turiya is defined by negation. It's not this, it's not that. It's not anything. <laughs> what is it? It's Atman. It's Brahman. It is the fundamental root substance, the origin of everything. Now, of course, in our ordinary day-to-day -day life, we don't come in contact with this. Or do we? Actually, everything is Brahman, including our own self and the world. But we don't see it that way. We see the world and the body and the empirical self, the individual, existing as independent entities. This is Maya. <laughs> so I want to go into Shankaracharya's commentary on this sloka, on this mantra, because it's extremely profound and very helpful for seeing things the way they really are. And what he says is in terms of the example of the rope and the snake. Somebody is coming out at night, maybe, or under poor lighting conditions, or maybe they need glasses, or maybe they're half blind, <laughs> and they see a rope, but they interpreted it as a snake. I mean, there is a certain similarity of form, but... Still, it's not a snake. It's a rope. So why do they see it as a snake? The Upanishads explain that it's because of prior associations. See, we, we go around, the mind especially, goes around in a state of fear. Let me try to head off any calamities. Let me try to stop any problems. I'm always going to be on the lookout for something going wrong. Because, hey, it's the material world, and that's the way it is, right? So the mind is there to defend the body, really. It's always looking out to see any potential problems. So when it sees this thing that looks sort of like a snake, and like I said, maybe the, it's dark out, or maybe, you know, it's raining or something, it immediately jumps to the conclusion, this is a snake. So this is because, again, of previous associations. Maybe one had a, a relative who was bitten by a snake and died or something like that. So remember, this is coming from ancient India, where the animal life was a lot more prominent than it is in our culture today. There was just a report released that 70% of all animals in the world 
have disappeared in the last 50 years. So we live in an artificial world. We live in a world that is dying because of our stupid actions. Anyway, that's another video. <laughs> what I want to cover today is the nature of the illusion. When one sees the snake as a rope and then goes running back in the house, hey, there's a snake, and everybody comes out with flashlights, right? And no, it's not a snake, it's just a rope. The snake disappears. Where does it go? And does it really disappear? Shankara says no, it doesn't disappear because it never existed in the first place. The snake was simply imagination. It was simply a delusion of the mind. It wasn't real. It was never real. So it can't disappear because it never was. So then what disappears or what changes? The delusion. And the delusion disappears because of knowledge. In other words, it's ignorance. And when the light of knowledge comes, the ignorance automatically disappears. Not only the ignorance, but also the delusions resulting from the ignorance. That that's, This is a snake. So I hope that's clear, because it's a very subtle point. Shankaracharya uses the same argument to explain the appearance and disappearance of the material world. He calls it the manifold, jagrat. And you know, Shankaracharya's mantra was Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. Brahman is real. The world is an illusion. It's false. Mitya means false. So we experience every single day the disappearance of the world and enfoldment in Brahman. And when is that? When we go to sleep at night. When we go to sleep, the world disappears. It's gone. Isn't it? We are still there. We are conscious. But we're conscious of the dream world now. And then the dream world disappears and we go into Sushupti. And there's nothing. Oh, not exactly nothing, because we are there. And this is Ananda Maya. This is bliss. Everybody needs their sleep, isn't it? If you don't get a good sleep, you're grumpy in the morning. <laughs> At least I am. So sleep is how we recharge our batteries. Why do we have to recharge our batteries? Because the world is suffering. Dukkha. Huh? It's anicca dukkha anatta. Non-eternal suffering or imperfect and not self. So then where is self? Self is the knower. Self is the watcher, the drik. And the world is drishya, that which is seen. And the act of seeing is drishta, which we call consciousness. So these things all disappear when we go to sleep at night. The only thing left is the seer, drik. And there's nothing to see in Sushupti. There are no objects. So consciousness also disappears, drishta. So when we go into Sushupti, there is only the self. There is nothing else. This is equivalent to the discovery that the so-called snake is just a rope. 
because the ignorance is removed by a change in the state of consciousness. The world, which is equivalent to the snake, disappears. That means it never existed in the first place. <laughs> So what are we doing here? Why is all this stuff so persistent? The ordinary dreams in Svapna come and go uh, like morning mist. They are impermanent, extremely impermanent. And that's why we call them dreams, and we don't take them too seriously. But this material manifestation seems to be real and persistent. And even though we go to sleep and it seems to disappear, when we wake up, it's still there. And people inform us, well, all this and this and this happened while you were asleep. And everything you remember from before is still existing. So how is it unreal? Well, it's not exactly unreal. It's Brahman. There is Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. Brahman without qualities, Brahman with qualities. Brahman with qualities is the world. So why does it disappear when we go to sleep? Because we go into Nirguna Brahman. And that's where the bliss is at. So then, when we get this knowledge of non-dual existence, Brahman consciousness, you could call it, knowledge of Brahman, jnana, not the, the material world doesn't exactly disappear, but the vision of the material world as a separately existing entity disappears. That's equivalent to the delusion of the rope as a snake disappearing. The snake doesn't disappear because it never was. In the same way, the material world as a separate, independently existing thing doesn't disappear. The illusion still is there as strong as ever, but now we have knowledge. Now we have a light that we can shine. And we can see that, oh, this isn't really independent at all. It isn't really a collection of individual entities. It isn't really a chaos of all these individuals. It's one thing. And this, this world was created in the beginning by God and Goddess. And the whole thing exists as a complete unit. Om Purnamidang Purnamada Purnang Eva Vashishyate. It's Purnam. It's complete. It's whole. It's not divided. But it is illusory because it is only an appearance. Actually, it's Brahman. Actually, it's consciousness, or more correctly, awareness. Because there is no object. There is no other. There is uh, only Brahman. Everything else is an illusion. A long time ago, I saw a, a cartoon. These uh, two hippies are sitting in, a, in the Piroshki shop in Haight-Ashbury. And this third guy joins him and he starts talking about how just exactly what I was just saying in the, a few minutes ago. <laughs> the material world is an illusion. Everything is one. There is no separate reality. It's all just consciousness, etc. Et and as he's talking, he starts to fade out and become transparent. <laughs> and finally, he says, only Brahman really exists. And poof, he disappears. <laughs> So one hippie looks at the other and he says, can I have his Piroshki? <laughs> so don't worry, I'm not going to disappear. 
Not yet, anyway. <laughs> soon, soon enough, I will disappear. But that's also a part of the material existence, that things come into being, exist for some time, and then they disappear. That's why it's illusory, because everything is temporary. It doesn't have real existence. And to think that it does is a delusion. To assume that everything is going to continue just as it is, is nuts. And yet, we have, as my friend Dave calls, silent mantras. I, me, mine, this, that those, them, you. <laughs> we have these silent mantras that divide one thing from another with the assumption that they are independently existing entities, and they're not. And all this was created in the beginning, and it's all unfolding according to the master plan. And we're simply the watcher, the drick. So enjoy the show. Don't get too hung up on it. You never know what's going to happen. Huh? Shakti is a great comedy writer. <laughs> and she loves to entertain Shiva with surprises. And he's also a big joker. Huh? He likes to create illusions, and he enjoys the joke. So don't take it too seriously. But do engage in spiritual practices so that you can see these things directly, not just hearing about it from somebody else, but realize it for yourself. And that leads to the highest enlightenment and liberation. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.